Ahead on our news tonight, a man gunned down in a commercial district. Investigators speak. Plus, why the economic rebound may come faster than you think. And later, Road March resumes as Bahamas Carnival is set to return. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Kendino Knowles. Gun violence continues in the capital as police are on the hunt for a suspect tonight responsible for gunning down a prisoner on a work release program in broad daylight today. The shooting happening in the middle of a busy commercial district. Our news digital reporter Janae Winter was on the scene. Within 12 hours of an earlier murder, police are called to the scene of another shooting. This one in broad daylight. An employee of Rubis Gas Station on Maki and Madera Street is gunned down shortly after 11 a.m. Police receive information of a male employee at this Rubis station on Madera Street. He was at the pump when he was approached by a lone gunman who shot him multiple times about the body. This male then left on foot and made good his escape. We're appealing the members of the public who is in this area and who may have seen anything to please contact the nearest police station. Chief Superintendent in charge of the Criminal Investigation Department, Michael Johnson, confirming the victim is in his late 40s and a part of the prison work scheme. Not much was said about the program or the prisoner. Yes, the victim is uh, on the work scheme from Her Majesty's prison. Um, that's as far as I will share with you at the start. Bystanders, not wanting to be identified, believe police should have provided better protection for the victim. If he was in jail, if he was in jail and like, ah, they have a out chair, they would have, they supposed to have a police car watching them. That's right. I, so the I feel bad. Yeah. Like somebody watching them. Though. Somebody watching them so they wouldn't get hurt. At the end of the day, that's hurtful to watch somebody get killed right there Next on the job. FNM Deputy Leader Shannon Dahl Cartwright also on the scene speaking to the whole issue of rising violent crime. You know, this is not a political issue. Um, you know, while we would have um, pressed the government on uh, leading um, plans, comprehensive plans to deal with the scourge of crime and gun violence, um, we got to put our heads together as a country, all of the various stakeholders, and come together. Reporting for our news, I'm Janae Winter. While talking to reporters on that murder scene today, Chief Superintendent Johnson answering questions about the level of concern for violent crime while reminding the public to be cautious. As you would know, we have strategies in place. There's an operation, ceasefire, that has been very successful in the last couple of weeks. Um, our acting commissioner right now is meeting with the press and allotting the success of that operation. So the police will continue to be up and about. Meantime, police say they believe they foiled a murder when a group of armed men were found in the trunk of a vehicle after a police vehicle was shot at. Officers saying the incident unfolded on Saturday morning around 2.30 with reports of an armed prowler on a property in eastern New Providence. On arrival, four individuals ran from a yard, all armed with weapons, high-powered rifle and also pistols. They ran and got into a small type vehicle. Officers pursued. Uh, the individuals fired a number of shots from their vehicle from the back windshield, which caused damage uh, to that uh, police. Acting Commissioner of Police Clayton Fernandez says officers then saturated the area and say that when that is actually when they discovered the vehicle acting suspiciously. There was a female driving the vehicle and a male sitting in the front passenger seat. Officers pulled it over, made a search of that vehicle, and find the men in the back trunk of that vehicle. And they were armed with a rifle, a rifle and also a pistol. And I just want to highlight this pistol as well. And this is another weapon, a handgun, with an extension. Uh, this is an automatic uh, piece that was added to this weapon and also the drum for extra rounds. A cooler fat turning violent as videos on social media showing multiple fights and reported stabbings. But Jared Higgs reports that no complaints have been made to the police. 
Multiple brawls spoiling a cooler fat over the weekend. <laughs> On Sunday, police said they had no facts surrounding claims that 13 people were stabbed at the event. Some video from the incident shows a man being stomped and attacked with bottles. <laughs> The event, titled Collide Cooler Fat, was held at a hookah lounge on Gladson Road. It's promo video featuring soca music. But video from the event shows a violent affair. One video showing a woman with blood coming down her legs. Deputy Commissioner of Police with Responsibility for Crime, Clayton Fernander, was asked about the incident at a press conference today. At this present time, uh, we don't have no complaints uh, made at any of the divisions with respect to incidents that occurred there. But we know, and based on the footage that is, that is out there, we know that you had a number of fights, uh, different areas uh, on that uh, compound. With Carnival approved, Carnival party promoters were asked how they can ensure safety at Carnival events after this weekend's incidents. CEO of Alpha Sounds Promotions, Trevor Davis, gave this answer. Well, um, remember now, I've, I've been doing this, doing events for the last 25 years in the Bahamas. I think my name, Alpha Sounds, speaks for itself. Um, I don't think I can remember all recall over the years, and thank God for that, that Alpha Sound would have had a promotion and would have had some kind of problem. So. As far as safety, again, we rely on the Royal Bahamas Police Force and we rely on our security team to keep everybody safe. But persons know when they go to a particular event or a particular album what to expect. And so when you come to an Alpha, Alpha Sounds event, you know, you know, that's to be on your best behavior because this is the kind of event where you just come to have some good friends, some, some good vibes, drink water and mind your business. I reached out to the party's promoter for a response to the claims, but got no answer. Reporting for our news, I'm Jared Higgs. Thanks, Jared. Well, it's time now for your first look at the forecast. Meteorologist Greg Thompson is in the Weather Center with the latest. Greg? Thanks, Kendino, and a good Monday evening, everybody. A very warm evening outside our studios right now. Temperatures near the 80 degree mark, 79 and the partly cloudy skies. Still a bit breezy out there, easterly winds at around 15 miles per hour, and it feels like temperature in the mid to upper 70s. On our satellite, quiet across the northwest and central Bahamas, but a surface trough near the southeast Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands, generating quite a bit of shower and thunderstorm activity across that area. The activity is actually moving out towards the east, but that surface trough will continue to track towards the northwest. So we should see some increase in shower activity across the central Bahamas late tonight and possibly moving into the Bahamas, northwest Bahamas by tomorrow. That's your first look at weather. Your extended forecast is still to come. And still to come on our news, an above average hurricane season as the official start approaches. Why you should begin preparing now. Plus, the economic recovery continues. And later, it's back on the road as Carnival is set to return next year. That's coming up when our news returns. now one month away from the official start of the hurricane season, but officials are urging residents to act now as meteorologists predict another above average hurricane season. Berthini McDermott reports. Officials are predicting an above average hurricane season with 19 named storms, nine hurricanes and three major hurricanes. As a result, the month of May has been named National Disaster Preparedness Month. According to Minister Responsible Miles LaRota, a comprehensive disaster mitigation strategy has been developed. This strategy is an integrated approach to disaster management that encompasses the management of all hazards through all phases of disaster of the disaster management cycle, namely prevention and mitigation, preparedness, response, recovery, and rehabilitation. 
The Atlantic hurricane season starts June 1st and ends November 31st. However, Acting Director of Meteorology Jeffrey Simmons says, like years before, it's likely systems will form outside of the hurricane season. He also explained the reason behind the prediction. You know, I've heard a lot going on talking about El Nino and La Nina. Um, there's an absence of, we, we don't see El Nino happening this year in the Pacific Ocean. So therefore, um, with La Nina in place, it actually, it, it produces an environment in the Atlantic Basin actually to, to, for these storms to grow. In 2019, Hurricane Dorian, a Category 5 hurricane packing over 157 miles per hour winds, battered Abaco and Grand Bahama. Following the devastating hurricane, officials have been working to better prepare themselves in the event another monster hurricane hit Bahamian shores. For instance, National Emergency Management Agency Director Captain Stephen Russell says plans are finalized to more efficiently and effectively care for the dead in the aftermath of a disaster. He said other disaster mechanisms are in place. NEMA has agreed in principle with the following. A number of food distributors to ensure that we have easy access to food supplies in the event any of our islands are threatened and we need supplies to um, go into various islands. Likewise, water distributors have made contact with those persons and have agreement in principle to gain access to water supplies. Our shipping companies, airlines, we also have, also have arrangements with those companies in the event we need their vessels or their aircraft for evacuation exercise or to transport relief supplies. He said NEMA also received a mobile shelter system that can accommodate 400 individuals with field kitchens able to prepare up to 600 meals per day. Reporting for Our News, I'm Bertha McDermott. And speaking of the upcoming hurricane season, the newly appointed chairman of the Subdivisions Appeal Board, Abaco native R. Dawson Malone, says after experiencing the devastation of Hurricane Dorian, it makes his new appointment all the more important to him. We've just had one of the roughest shakes with hurricanes. I was living in Grand Bahama when the hurricane came through. So appropriate and proper planning and development is so important to me as I lost friends and family. Uh, I have spent about 15 years working um, in litigation, impacting responsible development so as Minister has indicated, that is probably a niche practice that I've trained in. Organizers of a series of carnival events this month say they are expecting more than 1,000 people will participate in a six-hour-long road march. We've got more on that coming up. But first, the local economy could be fully recovered by next year. The word coming from Central Bank Governor John Roll while addressing the bank's quarterly economic briefing this morning. There continues to be a strong momentum of recovery in the Bahamian economy from the restrictive conditions of the COVID-19 pandemic. This reflects the stabilized and improved conditions in the major source markets for tourism that has supported the revival of international travel. Governor Rolls says the rebound of the tourism industry isn't the only reason the economy is bouncing back quicker than predicted. He says sustained contributions from foreign investments is providing healthy stimulus to the construction sector. It is expected that the economy could be fully recovered over the course of next year, that is 2023, possibly slightly ahead of the projections made at the end of 2021. That said, there continues to be a distinction between recovery from the low point of the pandemic, for which the fall off in the economy was quite drastic, and the still very mild annual growth projections that lie beyond the recovery phase. Improving the post-recovery prospects would help to push the unemployment rate below the pre-pandemic baseline. When our news comes back from the break, it's a road party for sure. Road March is back. Details on the setup for the return of Carnival coming up. And later we'll tell you the major milestone for Lucius Fox and how Rev comes to the aid of a local football camp. The details when our news returns.
This is our news. Welcome back. A major milestone for Lucius Fox and Rev supports a local football champ. Marcellus Hall, he's up now with sports. All right, thanks, Candino. Welcome to our sports, everybody. I'm Marcellus Hall. May 1st turned out to be a day of first for our Major League Baseball player, Lucius Fox, as he played with the Washington Nationals looking for his first hit. And why not throw a stolen base in the process? Let's take a look at the highlights. Bahamian Major Leaguer Lucius Fox still looking for his first base hit as a professional baseball player at the Major League Baseball level. His team, the Washington Nationals, in action taking on the San Francisco Giants. Top of the first, Lucius at the plate. And what do you know, the jinx is off. Lucius getting his first single as a Major League Baseball professional player. It turns out to be an RBI as well as a run comes in to score. So Lucius getting off to a great start. He would add another hit in this ball game for a second, finishing two for five on the day. Most importantly, the Nationals, they get a nice win in the process. 11 to five ends up being your final score. Great news for Lucius, like we said, with his first two hits of his professional career with the Nationals. They play again today as they take on the Colorado Rockies. Actually, tomorrow they'll play on Tuesday against the Colorado Rockies and hoping that Lucius will be back in the lineup and stay hot as he continues his Major League Baseball career. Meanwhile, Rev doing some good things as of late within the community, getting set to host a major uh, American football camp or be a part of it as it stands. Uh, organizers hoping that this thing will go extremely well. In fact, one of the organizers speaking with us this past week talking about what they hope to accomplish and really what's in store for those getting on board. We really want to impose just hope Right. Uh, you know, guys like Michael Strawn, who's a bohemian national, who's now achieving his NFL dream. He's going to come back here and speak to someone that sat in his shoes, you know, from the same islands he's from. And so honestly, it's just a blessing to be able to put it together. But just going to be a really great weekend where we get to immerse ourselves in the bohemian culture and also give back. We're planning more than a football camp. We'll have a beach cleanup. Uh, we'll have a dinner. We'll have a couple a couple functions to really have the people that are attending, you know, immerse themselves in the bohemian culture, including the NFL players, right? This, some of these guys will be the first time on the islands. So it's really just an opportunity to share hope and bring community. Together. And that's a check on sports for you here on this Monday. I'm Marcellus Hall. Back to you, Candino. All right, thanks a lot, Marcellus. Don't go away. Your extended forecast is still to come. Plus, is this a party or what? Road March is back on and organizers talk the 2023 return of Carnival. Welcome back to our news. It's time now for a look at your extended weather forecast and meteorologist Greg Thompson. He's back in the weather center with a final look. Greg. Thanks again, Candino, and welcome back, everybody, for our second look at weather. Surface rough across the southeast Bahamas, generating some showers and thunderstorms across that area. High pressure dominating the remain of the area. That activity across the southeast Bahamas will stay more east of the islands, but that surface trough expected to track towards the northwest. Showers and thunderstorms will begin spreading across the central and northwest Bahamas over the next two days before that system gets in the Gulf. Then high pressure will build back, back across us, and that should keep us warm for the balance of the week. Boating forecast for the Northwest and Central Bahamas tonight. Small craft caution in effect for you guys for swells. East to southeast winds 10 to 15 knots, seas 2 to 4 feet, but up to 6 feet in some northeast to easterly swells. High tide will be at 9.58 tonight for the southeast Bahamas. Caution flag in place for you guys down there as well. East to southeast winds 15 to 20 knots, seas running 4 to 6 feet over open waters. Here's a look now at your national forecast. A look now to extended forecast through next Monday. That's a look at our weather. Make it a safe evening, everybody. Kendino. All right, thanks a lot, Greg. Well, organizers of a series of carnival events later for later this month say they expect more than 1,000 people will participate in a six-hour-long road march. They stop short 
at calling it the return of Bahamas Carnival, saying it will be a much smaller event that will make way for the official return next year. Jasmine Brown reports. After a nearly three-year hiatus due to the COVID-19 pandemic, 90% of carnival bands are expected to hit the streets for a road march in just a few weeks. Members of the carnival community detailing plans for a series of carnival events that will all play out during survival weekend. And it's being described as three days of non-stop partying that will all take place between May 20th to May 22nd. One of the largest events will be the May 21st road march that will include a two-mile route from Arawak Key to Goodman's Bay and back. President of the Bahamas Carnival Band Owners Association, Raphael Dean. We know that it's a short amount of time um, because Carnival is basically deemed to try to bring in international funding you know, to the country. But this specific road parade will um, just basically be, um, it'll be about 90% bohemian participation um, to get the product started. We will use this as a launch for the big Carnival that will be back, God's willing, um, next year. A letter addressed to Dean and dated April 27, 2022, revealed the Ministry of Health and Wellness granted permission for the road march. The letter, which was obtained by the Nassau Guardian, notes that the event is permitted to have up to 500 people. But Dean says they expect they will get MOH approval for that number to be doubled. The only issue with that number was it was a typo and it will be corrected and we followed up with the Ministry of Health and a new letter will be issued. The capacity, I mean, for such short notice and what we're looking at would be a maximum probably of 1,000 to 1,200 persons. Bahamas Carnival was last held in 2019. A bubble carnival event was held in November. It was the first carnival-like event to be held since the COVID-19 pandemic started in March 2020. As for the other events slated for Survival Weekend, which is being organized by Alpha Sounds Promotions, they will also include a mega concert and beach fete. I think they see it fitting to say use this opportunity to springboard and to showcase and to let the world know that Bahamas Carnival is back and it's going to be back next year, bigger and better. Because now the three days of events will kick off here at Breezes, where revelers will be treated to a welcome party before heading into a weekend full of events. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Thanks, Jasmine. Well, for more stories like this and all the latest news, visit Our News Bahamas on Facebook. Thank you so much for joining us. For our news tonight, on behalf of the entire team, I'm Candino Knowles. We'll see you right back here tomorrow night. Until then, have a wonderful evening.